Hey, it's Chronologically Gaming, the only channel that's perpetually retro because we're playing every video game in order of release. Experience the brand new live show starring every single video game. You've seen the rest, now stay for the best. We're in the beginning of July 1982, and the last game we played was Escape from Vulcan's Isle on the Atari home computer. Let's see what is next. We're still on the Atari, and this is The Exterminator. Either on your 400 or 800, this one does not have a box, just a few screenshots. Let's pop in and play The Exterminator by William Fastner, the beginning of July 1982. Yes, thank you so much. We gotta have a manly before we start the show. All right, so this one you have different options to choose the skill level that essentially makes the web larger and smaller. I'm gonna put start, push start on our computer to begin. The Exterminator. So I am, I am the uh, bug spray around the outside of the web. That's moving up, down, left, and right, all around. And then if a spider reaches the top, oh, it grabs you and it pulls you inside and you lose a life. So you don't let those spiders go to the outside of the web or you will die. However, if you notice when you get a spider to the outside of the web, a little fruit appears. If you capture the fruit, then as they go around the web, you'll be able to kill them. The music is not inspiring. It is just a random garbling of noises. But uh, this one is very reminiscent to another game we've played called Bug Off that was also on the Atari. It also reminds me of Tempest, another tube shooter, if that is your fancy. You're moving around the outside while enemies are coming to the top. This is, I think, only the second or first or no, second or third time we've seen someone try to attempt a Tempest like game at home. And here it is The Exterminator. Oh, and they grabbed and pulled this in. It doesn't have any of the flashes or the vector graphics like Tempest does, but it has the similar gameplay. And the mechanic of as soon as a spider goes to the outside, oh, and they got me that time. If you pick up one of the fruits on the outside, then the spider will die, and you make your way level to level after that. It also doesn't change up the spider web or the level like Tempest does. Got it. Oh, there you go. And then whenever you have a game over, they give you a rank spider level. L a lover. So not a Black Widow clone. Uh, it is more of a Tempest game because we haven't seen Black Widow yet. What is Black Widow? Not doing anything justice as far as the sound or music goes. But as far as gameplay, it's honestly not the, the best. I, I'm, I'm, I have my Atari VCS joystick plugged in, but as far as control, you aren't getting... Uh, in other words, right now I have to move the joystick left and right to slide, but once you get to one other side, then you have to switch to up and down. So, like right now, up and down doesn't work. Oh, and we got a spider level it, lover again. <laughs> Yeah, when it drags you in, it really reminds me of Tempest. But it doesn't have the cool effect, you know, where the screen zooms in. There's not a whole lot of information I could find on this game, so I'd love to know if the developer could uh, give me some artwork or pieces of information. So if you're out there, William Fastner, contact Chronologically Gaming. Yeah, but it's, at least for the home, you wouldn't be able to play Tempest at home. You'd have to go to the arcades to play Tempest. The only other one that we saw was also, there was one other variant we saw of a Coco. At least that comes to mind. But this is still pretty fresh idea and pretty cool for, uh, for, for what it's worth over the other games we've seen. Going level to level. Oh, wait, nope. Oh, nice. We'll get the fruit. Boom, and he's dead. And we can keep, keep this one in the back burner. Let that spider... Oh, nope. Nope. <laughs> and he got us. There you go. That is Exterminator on the Atari home computer. Of all the games we've seen to this point, it's actually all right. Uh, I'd say above average considering the other games we've seen on the, the home computer space and this formula. Like a shooter, uh, we have played a game called Bug Off that allowed you to go around the perimeter, but it didn't have this kind of tunnel where enemies were coming at you. Bug Off was just a bunch of, uh, bu bunch of bugs on the screen and you just moved around the perimeter to shoot. Yeah, I like that uh, example. Poor Man's Tempest, but there's really no official way to play Tempest at home right now. It's all these kinds of games. So for Exterminator, it's still a really good time. I'm going to say three and a half stars of all the games you could play. It's pretty good. Definitely above average. Oh, there you go. 3.75. If only, if only. All right, let's see what our next game is. 
It's time to go on the Apple II and play Firebug. This one is the latest by Muse Software. Let's take a look at the box for Firebug. It was released as Firefly. The previous Firebug was kind of in a Ziploc baggie, not official. So this would be the re-release, calling it Firefly. It's the challenging maze game, and that doesn't even do it justice. The Muse Software marketing team needs to go back and fix that. If you flip it over the back, you can see there's an electric fly trap without getting zapped. You have to get through. Use your Apple joystick or keyboard fly, uh, pilot the firefly through a five level maze toward the exit on level one. As you work your way through, strategically pick up and release water drops to short circuit and destroy the trap. Hurry, the firefly's light is trailing behind and it could catch up. Each maze in the trap gets more complicated as you progress to the exit. If you're good enough to short circuit the entire maze before you get trapped, you can add your initials to the firefly great score list. So they give you, oh, there you go. They show you it's previously released as Firebug. A terrible picture of the screenshot, but then they have all this down here by Muse Software, including word processing, business. We don't care. All we care about is the games here. With the number one best-selling game in America, Castle Wolfenstein, I believe them. It should be the best-selling game in America. That's a big boast. Let's see the other art we have for Firebug or Firefly. This is the ad you would have seen in the magazine. Time is running out. Can you succeed at a test fire? Guide your mechanical firebug through increasingly complicated five-level maze using your Apple joystick or keyboard. Pick it up and drop gas cans to destroy the maze for bonus points as it heads for the exit. A fuse is burning behind your firebug, so your time is short. If you're good enough to destroy all the walls in your race through the mazes, you can add your initials to the firebug score list. We're going to need 48 k for this one. Looks like it goes for 25 bucks in this ad. And there's our five and a quarter floppy disk. The latest by Silas Warner. Man, this is pretty cool. I already enjoy Castle Wolfenstein. Let's see what firebug's like. We're popping in Firebug, the beginning of July 1982. Or Firefly. Yeah, the art is not selling it. All right, we get some nice sound effects of fire burning in the background. The controls you can see are, oh, you can turn sound on and off and space to see high scores. We don't have any, but I got my joystick in. Let's play. We want joystick button, pushing it now. And then here it lets you pick the length of the fuse you want to play on. If you want to play a hard mode, you bring the fuse way down here. We're going to bring the fuse way up so you can see how the game plays. And go. So I'm over in the left side corner. That is the Firebug. This is a low-res Apple II game. As you make your way around the maze, the fuse is going to go off and start lighting these blue gas cans. So watch the fuse. There it is. As it gets close to the gas cans, it's going to light that... Yeah, the, the blue gas can up there at the top. Watch what happens. And the fire bug has one pixel that is the one in the front. If I walk over something where that one pixel is like this, it's going to ignite this fire right here. Look at that. And then we start the burning. While the resolution is low, this is a very impressive fire simulator. One of the best, if not the best, we've seen so far on the channel. Look at that. It's starting to burn the building down. So cool. So I'm going to light this one up and then go over here. The fire's going. <laughs> and then when you burn the whole thing down, such a cool effect. So it's almost like we're playing a top-down maze game, but with a fire element for all those arsonists out there. And then whenever you're done, you move over here, go to the next level. That would be the stairwell. Looks just like a stairwell, right? <laughs> yes. Burn it! Burn it all! You made it through the fifth floor. Score previous floors, pick up the... Uh, press pick up for the next floor down. So we go to the next level, and they change it up. Every time you play, it's a different map or maze to, to move around. And you can decide whether you want to burn up the gas cans or walk next to them and let the fuse take care of it. So I'm not going to let my fire bug do it yet. I'll let that one burn up. Oh, that probably was a bad choice. It's going gonna, gonna to catch the other ones on fire. But it causes the chain reaction, and you have to think about getting out of here before you blow up. You see, we got one that's here on the left side. I'm going to take care of that one. Look at that. Such a cool effect. It is awesome. It is a feast for the eyes. And then we make our way to the stairwell and go to the next level. And we burn it all down. Burn it all down. <laughs> Never have an experience like this with any video game with fire. The only closest one I can think of is the life games where they are simulating cellular life growing. That's kind of similar to it, but the cellular life was following a different formula and making this with fire, how the fire spreading and exploding is a, a great idea. 
All right, let's go to the next floor. So they switched it up again. We have to be able to burn it all up. Finding the best path without dying at the same time. I did pick the easiest skill level. When you go with shorter fuses, it's a lot more tricky. Like, for example, I need to not do this. That's not a smart idea. Because I was going to walk into the fuse, and then this was going to start blowing up. It wouldn't end up well. Let's see what this fire does. You see, it blows up that gas can. Does it spread to the next one? It does not. Okay, very good. So what we'll do is we'll go in here, blow up that one, and then run away. It's a really cool idea. It's, I wouldn't really call it strategic, but you, you have to make your way through the maze a certain way without blowing up. And it's a different experience because the maze is different every single time you play. I've uh, been playtesting this, and the level that I begin with is always a different one. Look at that. And there, fire's going to burn up and blow up the last gas can. Quick, quick, quick. If it blows up all the walls of this floor, like uh, if you look at the outside perimeter, that's this floor. If that entire thing burns up, then you die. So you have to get out and go to the next floor before, the, uh, before it all burns down. There we go. Yeah, the effect is awesome. I really enjoy it. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. A maze slash puzzle or maze and a puzzle game. So we're through the third floor. Let's go. Next floor, switching it up. And you can decide whether you want the gas cans to explode by having the fire bug, that, that center pixel, go over it or not. So I'm going to go next to it with our fuse. Same one with this one. We can't really light that if we wanted to. I'm going to do the same over here. And I wonder if that is going to blow up and cause the fire to spread. It does not. Okay, so let's move ourselves over here. We're going to see that one blow up. Go in this way. Oh, oh, nope. It's going to go. Oh, yeah, you did get that gas can. Okay, we're getting the heck out of here. Before it spreads even more. And then we'll go down to this one. It is an only one player game. It is a slower paced game. But um, the idea of this chain reaction that you're causing is, is awesome. There, and I got the last one. You see how it blew up and started to burn the wood, and then eventually got the last gas can. Yes, right? I could definitely see that as well. All right, we'll play this one as our last level or the last floor. But it's another one of those games that if I pick up a game here on the live show and I don't want to stop playing, it's a, type, a testament of a truly very good game. And this is the same. I don't want to stop playing. I want to see how far or how many levels I can get through. If we saw in the ad, it only said it had five floors. So every time you play, it is true, you only go through five floors. Now notice how this one has exits. So this one's going to burn up some. i got to wait here, but the fuse is going out. Nope, we didn't make it. Bad decision. If you don't, if you take too long, see how the fuse just burned it up? And we made an ash of ourselves. That's hilarious. Thank you for an enjoyable fire. And then it goes back to the beginning. So um, even though it says it's only a few levels, every floor, even though it's a certain number, it's always going to be different, always changing. Yes. <laughs> That's true. Yes, it would. It'd be COVID-19 or something. All right, so let's <laughs> exit out of here. Either Firefly or Firebug, however you want to say it, it's a great, great time. Uh, that is an awesome game for a home computer. I don't know of any other releases after this. This is all we got as far as uh, Firefly or Firebug. I'm going to go up here with a really cool game. Uh, this one's a four-star game at least for Firebug. Great idea. Executes well. It is slightly slower paced, but that's the idea. It, it works well for this one. Yes, Silas Warner is the one who did Castle Wolfenstein. Famous for Castle Wolfenstein and Robot War. If you haven't seen those, take, check the links down below for all the games we played. We've seen everything by Silas Warner so far. Oh, Steve's going four and a half for uniqueness. Yes, I'm with you on that. That would be classified as one of the best computer games you could play for the time. All right, let's see what our next game is. We're going to still hang out on the Apple II. This is the latest release called Free Fall. Let's check out Free Fall starting with the box. Free Fall, fast action game from Sirius Software. Really enjoy them. This is on the Apple II or II Plus. Another one you need 48K for. So if you've been keeping up with every computer game we played on the channel, majority of the high-end games right now need 48K of memory, but there was a select few games that needed 64K of memory to run. One of them, with the very first one we ever saw, was Microsoft Decathlon. And I remember when we saw 64K, I was thinking that would be so expensive to be able to play the game. But coming up soon this summer is the release of a computer that comes with 64K. It's on, it's on the horizon. Let's flip it over on the back. 
It's free fall, the game that you'll have to a rising new heights of enjoyment. You'll float down through a deadly shower of needles, guns, and bombs on your way to safety holes in the ground. Doesn't sound that fun. Clever ones will learn to maneuver by grabbing the floating girders as they plummet. Others will find their free fall rudely interrupted by a fatal collision. Keep practicing. You'll find free fall is a great way to get down and have a really good time. Get down. This is by Mark Trumel. Way to go, Mark. Let's see the other ar artwork we have for free fall. <laughs> yes, more burning things. Give it four stars. All right, and there's our five and a quarter floppy disk. We're going to pop into play Free Fall. This is Serious Software Software the beginning of July 1982. We might have to speed this one up just a little bit for load times. I think it flashes the screen a couple times before we go in with a bunch of ad symbols. And then we eventually come in. Now, um, some of these games you cannot play without a crack. You have to have someone that has cracked it or cleaned it up to get past the uh, copyright protection. Now, oh, hey there, little guy. <laughs> what is he doing here? I don't remember him on any other serious software games. Is that a Mark Turmel thing? Uh, serious Star Freefall by Mark Turmel. And you push spacebar to go in. Turmoil. Yes. <laughs> no, yeah, not that one. Later we will, definitely. So it gives you the option of paddles, joyport, or keyboard. E either one. I love it when it gives you even the option on the home computer. Let's start on level one so you can see what it's like. Girders. Let's go. We're starting almost like we're playing pinball, but that's not quite it. You shimmy yourself across, and then when you push the button to go down, you're going to grab hold. Oh, there we go. Grab hold. <laughs> There you go. Grab hold of the girder, and then when you push the button again, you'll drop. So you're trying to make yourself drop to the bottom to get points. If you don't make it in any of the holes at the bottom, like the blue or orange holes, I think I grabbed the wrong one. There you go. Then uh, you'll lose a life. So we have uh, three men right now, but as you make your way down, let's see if we can do it. Grab the side. Very nice. I want to be able to go get some points right there. Very cool. Oh, okay, don't touch the bomb. And if you drop down the orange one, then you get an extra bonus man. So it's almost like you're playing human pinball, human pachinko, uh, not not quite. You have control over yourself shimming around, but this had to have been someone's nightmare of dreaming like they were in a pinball machine. Oh, missed it. So lost a life, there you go, one man lost. You have to be able to make it to one of the spots at the bottom. Very cool idea. It's a side-scrolling game that's not based on Donkey Kong or another platformer we've seen. It is fresh. Quick, grab it. No, missed it again. So you have some movement for your character, but not a whole lot. It's meant to be more um, timing whenever you want to let go of the gurus to fall down. Let's see if we can go there. And the next one, nice and easy, and go. Did I miss it? Wait, we'll I'll go for the blue one then. There we go. So whenever you make it down the blue, holds at the bottom, then you get points. But if you make it down the orange one, you get an extra life. So let's see if we can make it down the last one. Let's see if we just drop here. Go. All the way. Come on. All the way. That's it. Go. Yes. Yeah. There we go. One bonus man. Got some points. Now we go to the bit bops. So they switch up every level. It's not just girders every single time. Whenever you go, uh, after you go through all the floor, the holes at the bottom, then it goes to another level. Oh, this one's a little trickier. Let's drop there. Oh, no. Let's drop there. Is that? Yeah, that should make it. Go, go, go. This is a lot of fun. While it is just simple gameplay, it executes really well. Making you feel like I am stuck. Oh, yes. Go, go, go. Oh, do we lose it? Yeah. You can't go on the needle, I guess, or you die. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, kind of similar to Sh uh, Chaos. Chaos allowed you to move around, though, not grab hold of the girders like this. But similar concept. Just make yourself to the bottom. Quick, quick, quick. There we go. Got another one. So we have two other exits down at the bottom uh, to do next. Dropping here. No. Hit us. Gosh. And we were disintegrated. Cool effect when we die. I like it. Let's shimmy ourselves over. Let's see if we can do it again. Go, 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 go. Quick. Oh, he caught us there. When you're hanging on the girder... Nope, missed it. When you're, when you're hanging on the girder, you are impervious. So it's like whenever you are in free fall, that's whenever you can get hurt. Let's see if we can do it now. Go, go. Oh, it's that bouncy ball. You got to avoid that one. And we can put our initials in. Nice touch. 
I'll just put in AAA for now. Don't even fiddle with it. It, it takes a little bit of getting used to. Wow, we get a Diddy on the Apple II. That's pretty rare. I don't know if I'd say Lunar Lander because we don't have no control of our falling rate. Where there's not a, like a thruster that's keeping us from going down. But it does have the, the same like trying to land on a certain spot or in the hole, I guess. So because it changes up and has different levels, free fall is a pretty cool time. I like that one. That one's fun. Uh, not enough to really push like something further than above average, but I'll go three and a half stars for all the computer games you could play for the time. It's not one to avoid, and it's not just average. I'd say three and a half. Slightly above average. All right, after free fall, let's see what is next. Here's a bizarre one. We're on the Atari home computer, and this is Frog. All right, so Frog is a game that was first available in a brochure and then a magazine. You can see here, this is uh, whenever it was on in the uh, uh, magazine Antic, the Atari Resource, the October and November issue. And then there it is. There's the typing in. If you want to type in Frog, that's what you have to do. This is by Stan Ockers, licking up the blinking bugs. Man, it's a lot of code. I think there's even an additional page after that with an example of the screenshot. No other artwork we have for Frog. Let's type in and play. By Stan Ockers, published in Ace Newsletter or in Antic Magazine in the beginning of July 1982. <laughs> yes, that'd be awesome. All right, so now we can pick either paddle or joystick. We're going to go with joystick. And I'll show you why. You have different difficulty selections. We're going to start with the base one. How many do we have for this one? I'm going to go, let's see, three, four, four, five, six, seven. Oh, six different difficulties. All right, well, let's go ahead and push start on the computer, and we're in. We're playing a giant frog. So all you have to do is get your tongue to fly out and hit the flies and eat the flies. Your joystick has the ability to move in eight different directions. So if you look at the frog's eyes, that's me moving the joystick. But you just can't let any of the flies touch the frog. So it's a very different take. It almost reminds me of the idea of space zap, where you have missiles coming in. Oh, nice. They give us a burp. The missiles coming in from the side, but you're shooting only top, down, left, and right. This one actually is doing eight different directions where your tongue sticks out, but it's the same idea. Things are coming at you and you need to take them out before they touch you. Looks like we already made it to level two, which means it's going to get progressively more and more difficult. For a type-in game, it's a cool concept. And having a game with a frog, frogs are all the rage now. It's, it's all about frogs and monkeys, or I'm sorry, apes. Donkey Kong was technically a gorilla. Go, go, go. And it's essentially seeing how long you can last. <laughs> if you do enjoy Space Zap, it's pretty much the same thing, but you're adding on more levels of where enemies are going to attack you from. For a, a type-in game, it, it is worth the type-in. And I believe this is only available on the Atari home computer. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Space Zap is the other name it was called. It's also kind of cool seeing a, an object so large on the screen. Usually we're seeing very small or tiny things, but controlling or appearing to control something very, very large is pretty, is pretty fun. Yeah, it is, it is slower. Let's crank up the difficulty. I'm going to push... Um, <laughs> well, let us get eaten by a fly. All right, press difficulty. Let's go... It was six, right? Let's see if six is like crazy flies everywhere. Okay, yeah, they fly in a little faster, but yeah, it's still slightly slower paced. If we were only rating type-in games here... This would be around, I'd say, average, maybe even above average. But um, because we play every single game, every computer game, for Frog, I'm going to say it is uh, subpar if you think of all the experiences you could have on a home computer. Is it a bad experience, though? That's a good question. Uh, it depends on if this kind of gameplay is your style. It's stationary. You don't really have to do a lot. 
uh, to attack. Um, be just because of everything else we've seen to this point for Frog, uh, I'm gonna say it's a two-star game. It's five. It's it's a bad title, but it's it, it's it's good enough to get by. For uh, if you type this in, yeah, you'd be happy with it. But uh, we play it all, so it's got to be a two-star here. All right. After that, let's see our next game. Let's go to the Commodore VIC-20. This is the release of Garden Wars. Let's take a look at Garden Wars, starting with the box. The Friendly Computer, that's right. You can see this one is both in English and French, released in North America only, at least to my knowledge. Step into the Garden of Deathly Delights. This exciting maze game has plenty of action and thrills. Hours and hours of fun for everyone who plays. Really? Hours and hours of fun? It has centipede variants, and you're going to have fun after all with Garden Wars. It almost reminds me thinking like centipede because it has mushrooms, snails, uh, and there's a snake in the background. And then we're down at the bottom going to be shooting something up. Let's flip it over on the back. You can see yeah, both languages are here. Commodore offers a full range of... Oh, okay. This really doesn't tell you about the game, though. It's just Commodore stuff. Yeah, it looks like Errol and Vic Victor are with me on that one. Let's see the other artwork we have for Garden Wars. Besides the box, we're going to have a cartridge we pop in, and that's about it. For other versions, we have alternate ones only for North America. Let's pop in the cartridge and play Garden Wars by Rick Madge. Published by Commodore Business Machines in the beginning of July 1982. I'm going to lower this a little bit. It's thing gets loud. All right, it starts with an attract mode, kind of like you're playing an arcade game. It honestly feels like the standard or the usual Commodore VIC-20 game where it's a, it's a fixed screen like this, it's a top-down, has um, a, a maze theme to it, but there's a lot going on here. I would love to have the manual. Whoa! And when you blow up a, a bomb, it looks like that. Pretty cool. I really want to get the manual, and I tried scouring as much as I could to find more information on this game, but um, I, I want the explanation of all the enemies, and it's difficult to find that. So just to give you a quick overview of what it is, it's the single screen, and they call it similar to Berserk in this description, but it's really not. Your goal is to earn as many points as possible collecting stuff in the maze. However, the originality of the game is because there's monsters, snakes, toads, centipedes, spiders you have to shoot, and of course can kill you. There are flashing items you need to pick up for points, and you, if you accidentally shoot them, you'll, they'll, they'll disappear and reappear somewhere else. There's small yellow spider eggs, and if they're not destroyed, they will hatch small yellow spiders, and these spiders will finally evolve into blue spiders, so you want to be able to pick up all those eggs in the garden. That would be the cool draw to this one. All right, let's push F1 and go play for real. That wasn't really me. So we're down at the bottom of the screen, moving left, moving right. We have an actual arrow we shoot. But the noise is cacophonous. This is just a smorgasbord of random things happening. And if you touch the bomb, oh, we blow. Yes, we blowed up. Yeah, I gotta be Canadian French is my guess. All right, so let's go over here. And you can see the different flashing objects. You want to be able to pick those up for more points, like this one at the bottom. Avoid the bombs, get the eggs before they hatch, and the entire game takes place on this screen. So there is no draw to move to the next level. There is no next stage. It's just seeing how long you can last right here. Oh, uh, we can blow the bombs away from a distance. That's nice. Let's pick up this one. Oh, the spider got us. That's high. <laughs> yes, that's a good a good shout out. It is it is like um, uh, Minter's uh, Grid Runner. Oh, we already have game over. That was fast. We push F one to go again. Let's go. So part of the reason I want to have the manual is to know what everything means or pick up that values. For the very first time, I want to know what the point values are and what things are good and what things are bad. So it makes it a little difficult to play. I can see where the spiders are. And you can see the spiders are going to continue to... There we go. And you also have the snakes that wiggle around. But the whole affair is how long can you last? Oh, the snail got me that time. It looks like almost every enemy that's not flashing destroys you. <laughs> that's, a, that's right, it does sound like the arcade. There's so many sound effects happening. Why isn't the blue spider dying? 
the blue spider is just stunned. Can you not kill him? Oh, I think the blue spider, that's the one that starts the eggs off. Oh, what do we do? Oh, we, we moved to another level. Okay, so it does have different screens. I thought it was all the same. So it, it gave us a slightly different maze than it had before. But I'm not sure what qualified or what I did to get to the, the next level. Just pick everything up that's flashing, destroy everything else. Man, that is so noisy. Wow. Yeah, shield your eyes. That was like uh, the most extreme noise we've heard. <laughs> but for a Commodore VIC-20 game, it's it's a really good time. Uh, it's similar to a few others we've seen that uh, that, that have the same viewpoint and uh, t take inspiration from Pac-Man, like the maze, maze view. As far as all the computer games you could play for the time, aside from the noise, you can always turn the volume down. But uh, honestly, it's kind of kind of cool hearing what sounds like an arcade with constantly sound constant sounds happening. For Garden Wars, though, uh, I still say it's around average for all the games you'd play for the time. Uh, and what we've seen up to this point on a home computer, it's um, not doing anything, partic anything particularly impressive. So I'll say three stars of all the games you could play up to this point. Oh, uh, three and a half. Oh, 3.5. Nice. Okay, I see on that. Yeah, I wouldn't say above average for this just because, uh, well, you know what? I think it's because we don't have the manual or instructions of what things are good, what things are bad. If we did that, then maybe it would be better. But think of it like a, bar a, a bargain bin or you pick this cartridge up and you pop it in your VIC-20. You'd have to figure it out yourself. That's kind of what we did today. If it does turn up, though, I will replay. All right, with that, let's get see what our next game is. We're going back to the Atari home computer, and this is Getaway. Let's take a look at Getaway starting with a box. Getaway, winner of the 25,000 Atari Star Award. It's got to be good. Find the loot and stash it in your hideout before the law nabs you. Nice. For ages six and up, steal that money, kids. So, consumer written programs, this is by APX. Nice box. This must be a later release of the APX box. Let's flip it over in the back. You can see this is by Mark Reed. Way to go, Mark. A colorful town covering 35 screens. Oh my gosh, Lively Sounds, Company of the Action, Patrol Cars, Roadblock, Stop Signs, Nighttime added to the excitement, different treasures at every stage. You've been racing all over town collecting loot and stashing it in your hideout. As long as it was just a little cash here and there, the law wasn't too interested. But then you knocked off an armored van, and now the heat's on. You better get away. No way! So it's like uh, we're doing a crime game? That's cool. Use your joystick to drive your getaway car around the colorful... Uh, covered a scrolling map of 35 screens holding lots of treasures. You can collect as much cash and prizes as you want before returning to your hideout. However, the more you're carrying around, the keener the law is on tracking you down. You get to run away from the law? That's awesome. You can use the radar blitz to detect nearby patrol cars and armored vans. And when you first get caught, you have two other getaway cars you're disposable before you have to call it quits. As soon as you capture... The van, uh, as soon as you capture the three prizes and the armored van on one level, you automatically move to the next level. So they even have a goal. That's awesome. And there's Mark. Look at him. Mark Reed. Looks like uh, they also have his game Solitaire, which I believe we already played that one. And then uh, resued it in another game called Downhill, which was a skiing game. Very nice. Let's see the other artwork we have for Getaway. Besides the box, here's the ad you would have seen at the time by APX. Getaway. Oh, look at that. They have a, a picture of the whole map. That is huge. Oh, you have played this a bit. Yeah, this one looks fantastic. Very cool artwork, too, for the ad there. And then we also have the five and a quarter floppy disk. If you had it to pop in, most of the time it's going to be on, ca uh, on cassette. At least that's the way I would play. It'd be cheaper to do that. Yes. And we did play Armored Car, yes. But uh, this one is a different take on you get to actually run away from the law and have an objective. All right, let's see the manual for Getaway. And it looks like Mark read the manual too. Great job, Mark. Let's breeze through all that stuff. And, okay, this is what we read uh, on the back of the box. Use your joystick in this one-player game to drive your getaway car around a colorful town co covered in scrolling map filling 35 screens. That is really impressive. The only other games I can think of that are that large are the Crystal Wear titles, and especially if this scrolls around. You can collect as much cash and prizes as you want before returning to your hideout. However, the more you're carrying, the keener the law is on tracking you down. You can use the radar blips to detect nearby patrol cars and armored vans, so maybe it has a radar. And when you first get caught, you have other getaway cars at your disposal before you have to call it quits. As soon as you capture the three prizes and the armored van, you move to the next level. What is required? 
We need 32K for the cassette. Yeah, and disc. That's awesome. On our, our Atari, that's pretty That's pretty nice. And then if you want to contact, we can get them there. This is how you turn it on. First display screen. Get started to begin your life of crime. That is awesome. Press the start key on your keyboard or the red button on your joystick. And then they show you the map information display. When the screen shows the part of the town where your getaway car is parked. It always starts at the hideout, which is represented by the H on the road in the, the near the southeast end of town. And the police are nearby. The town occupies about 35 TV screens. Wow. That's amazing to think of at the time. You only see part of the town at a time. As you drive, your car stays in the center and the town scrolls past. A map of the whole town is at the end of the instructions. I want to see that. Information displays above and below the map. At the upper left corner are spare getaway cars or lives. And the upper right is the amount of loot you've stashed to your hideout. So you basically get money and then bring it back to the H or hideout in the far corner. And the lower left is the gas gauge. At the lower right is the cash on hand. Your cash doesn't count as part of your score until you move it to your stash, which you do by returning to your hideout. And I think you pay money to get gas, right? Yeah, driving around is really easy. You just move the joystick up, down, left, and right. You don't have to worry about uh, relative controls based on where the car is. It's pretty simple. And then collecting loot, you just run over it. It's very, very easy. The dollar signs are cash. And then uh, every level, there's going to be different prizes or pit, things to pick up, like they have diamonds or hearts and things like that. And uh, the white van is an armored truck that drives around town at random. It's a special kind of prize. To get to the next level, you must run into the van after capturing the three prizes on the level. So everyone get the objective. You get three prizes, you crash into the van, and then you can go to the next level. You can also run to the van other times. You can collect cash to do that as well. And then the police are all over the place here. Uh, they're not as simple as just picking up cash and heading for the hideout. The place is patrolled by three police cars. And you're only safe from the police when you're in your hideout. However, if you get scared and stay too long, it disappears until you drive away from it. So you can't just camp out in your hideout. The police will leave you alone at first, but as you collect more cash, they get smarter and pursue you more relentlessly. When you deposit your cash to the hideout, they lose interest temporarily. It's almost like a reverse Pac-Man because, you know, whenever you pick up a power pellet in Pac-Man, all of the ghosts run away from you. Well, in this one, you actually have them more coming at you the more uh, prizes you get. Oh, yeah, don't worry about the typos. No problem. All right, so we also have the radar blips. The colored radar blips appear at the edge of the screen whenever a cop is nearby to avoid. The color blip changes uh, based on the color of the patrol car because they're different colors. They're not all just one uh, police car color. The van has a white radar blip, and it's helpful to search for the van. It doesn't flash. You can easily recognize it. Each cop has a distinctive siren also, so sounds are also important in the game. Then we have getaway gas. We have to also have the, enough gas. The town has three gas stations, and you have to learn their locations because when you start running out, you got to go to the gas station and pay money for it. You also can't waste time. You have one day to complete each level, and as night falls, the police are more intent on stopping you. Roadblock stop signs appear as time goes by. The longer you take, the more barriers you face. Roadblocks look like an X. You can run through them, and they'll disappear. Whenever you do, you'll cringe as you hear the roadblock fragments tearing into your gas tank. All holds are repaired when you stop at a gas station. So a gas station is like the paint and spray on Grand Theft Auto. It just fixes everything. And then we also have bonuses that you can pick up along the way. Lots of information in the manual because this is a this is a really big game. This is really impressive. I've been sashing all this in a 32K game. And then when you depleted your stock cars or you don't have enough money or you get picked up by the cops, then the jig is up. And then it breaks down all the levels. They have level 7 is a surprise if you get far enough. That's awesome. So not only are you going for an objective for money, but you have the draw of let's see what the next level is. There's all the point values. You can also replay the game. And if you want to pause, you can use the space bar. And they have helpful hints like Atari manuals. Very nice. Look at this. This is so much information. So cool. And it tells you yeah, even more on the next page. And then here at the bottom, look at this. This is the full map. Well, at least on its side. It is so big. So there's the hideout in the bottom right. And gas stations there, and you could you, we'd be using this. I'd have this out to play the game, definitely. All right. As far as getaway, we only have two additional versions we could play. Let's play the first one by Mark Reed of Atari Program Exchange in the beginning of July 1982. Let's play some getaway. This is one I'm gonna crank it up. Let's make the because it has cool sounds and music on here. After we hear the. The, the tape load. There we go. Oh, I have a little quick ditty. Notice that the entrapped mode is showing you 
what the map looks like. We have trees, landscapes, and it's been programmed to scroll around. Look how smooth it is compared to other scrolling that we usually see at the time. All right, let's push start to play. I'm hanging out in my hideout now. Oh, there's a white van. Go get it. Cool. We got the white van already. Now we need to make our way around town. Lose the cops if we need to. There's a gas station. In a way, this game is very similar to Rally X. Where it has the scrolling, uh, a radar mechanic, and then you're driving around uh, a maze type view. This doesn't look good, actually. I might have to go back to the hideout. Uh-oh, multiple cops are chasing us. But the thrill is on. Oh, and they got me. <laughs> and the top left, it shows you your next life that comes out. And we didn't get any money because everything we just picked up, we have to go back to the hideout to get credit for it. So our gas is slowly going down. I really enjoy that they give you a... The night will show up if you take too long. But I don't see a way to determine that. There's not a time displayed anywhere. Oh, we got a diamond. Nice. There's a gas station. Listen, the diamond costs 200 bucks. So we can play safe. Oh, there we go. Cops are going to start coming after us. Let's pick up this money here. And you can see the little blip at the bottom. That's showing us a little information of where the cops are. I don't know if you can see it. It's really, really small That's at the bottom. So we're in the hideout. Cash is deposited. And it shows the stash up at the top. Let's check out this side of the city over here. Yeah, this plays well. It has a goal or objective. Wait, can we get more? Yeah, get some more money. So there's our cash. What a excellent idea. I'd say the premise is even better than Rally X. Picking up flags is okay, but this is this is so cool. This is like driving around a city. And gas is at 61. We're looking okay. So uh, we won't be able to use the gas until we put this in our stash. So we got to drive back to the hideout, add it to the stash, and then go look for the gas station to stay in the game. And this is all just level one. So bear that in mind. We're only playing the first level of this, what is it, 35 screen map. And you have another one that comes up later. They just mix it up a little. Oh, uh, while we're here, let's pick up more money. All right, we got a bunch there. There's the gas station. I've already lost track of where the hideout was. The map is so large. It's in the bottom right, so we'll just keep going down. Nope, that's a dead end. Did we miss it, or did we not go far enough? Let's see. There it is, yes. Cool, so cash goes into the stash. We got 380, and we have, looks like, two diamonds left. And I'm looking around for the radar. It looks like the armored car is in the top. Oh, there it is. Got it. This feels like I'm playing the Battletoads mode. <laughs> yeah, this is way better than Armored Car. I'd, be I'd rather play this than the arcade game. There it is. Nice. And now we need to find the two other treasures. Let's check out the top right of the screen. Very fun. Cool. We've already played several Rally X variants that you can play at home, uh, and they're pretty good. This, I would say, is the best Rally X variant that you could play so far. Uh-oh, what is it? Need to go... No! They got just a piece of me. And then there's our life coming in, our, our next driver showing up, and then we're out of the hideout, and then we're going. So we got to find one more treasure, and then smash in the armored car, and then we can move on to the next level. What a massive map, though. The only thing it doesn't have is there's not a radar that shows uh, like a smaller version of the map. The, the radar is just following a, a single pixel across the screen. Let's see if it's over here on the top left. It also saved our... Uh, there it is. Got the diamond. Okay, so now it's telling us in the top right corner we got to find the armored car. And it looks like it is... I don't see the blip right now. Where's the armored car? I see a red blip for the policeman, but I don't see the other one. Let's see. Over here. Look at this. You got bridges to cross. 
the map just feels more intriguing than Rally X. Rally X felt like you were playing a, a, a like a Pac-Man maze in a a roadster style or, or or a street style, but this is this feels more like you're driving around a town or have more freedom for it. Uh-oh, they don't like it. Gas is doing okay. I still don't see the symbol for the armored car. I see, if you look at the outside perimeter, the blips start moving and show you where everything is. I can only see the police cars right now. We're at 53. Oh, there you go. I found it. See the blip at the top? That's the armored car. You're mine. We must smash into it. Now it feels like it's purposefully... Nice. Okay, we got it. Now we got to go back to the hideout. If I can find it. It's way down here somewhere. They didn't go too crazy with the sound effects of the car. I, I have the volume turned up very loud. There it is. We got it. Oh, wait. What are we missing? Plus three. What is plus three? I thought we got all three of the treasures. No, don't get me. go to the next one. Well, you get the idea of a, a quick taste of what Getaway is. This is awesome. Uh, of all the games you could play on a home computer, Getaway is up there as one of the best. Uh, a Rally X variant, uh, has objectives, has multiple levels. It's um, uh, fun because you're moving around the, uh, a maze, but you're being chased by cops. You get to uh, f find money, stash it away. It is awesome. Uh, a, a really, really fun fun game. I'm going to go of, of all the games we've seen. We're up here in the five-star range. I'm going to say four and a half stars for Getaway. This is pretty impressive. All right, after Getaway, let's see what our next game is. We're hanging out still on the Atari home computer, and this is Golf Challenge. Golf Challenge is the latest by Sierra Online. Let's take a look at the box. Golf Challenge. Example of the 16K cassette you need. Only 16K? That's pretty cool. Front of the box is uh, tiny people. Are we doing mini putt or are we doing real golf? <laughs> but look, they're in kilts. Old school golf. Let's flip it over in the back. Are you getting teed off at gopher holes bigger than 18 holes? Tired of weather being too hot or too cold? Are caddies really worth the trouble? Ever been beaten, beaten by a golf ball or tra trained on a sand, rap, uh, a sand trap? If you answered yes to any of the above questions, forget all your troubles. Now you can play a full round of golf indoors. Sit back, power up your computer, and prepare for a relaxing round of golf. Complete with dog legs, sand traps, roughs, and all the hills and hazards you would encounter on a regular golf course. But you won't f find the rain or the rodents. It's a perfect game for adults or children, and more fun than a hole-in-one. So, uh, we're not going to have experience any troubles here playing a golf game in 1982? I don't think so. Let's see what other artwork we have for Golf Challenge. Here's the ad you would have seen in the magazine. Finally, a computer game you can beat your kid at. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Way to go, Sierra. Yes, your kid boots up their famous space swashbuckler and says, Come on, Dad. One more game of Starstruck. And then an the example of a screenshot there. You're quite organized. All right. For other uh, versions, we just have some alternate ones. Let's pop in and play Golf Challenge by Harold Schwab of Sierra Online, the beginning of July 1982. We've already played most golf games on home consoles. For computers, we don't see too many golf games. There's only about one or two that we've seen since then. So I'd like to see how they do this or what they do. I don't believe, yeah, we didn't get a manual for this one, but if I push the select button, you can do up to four players playing alternately, or if you push the option button, you can do the first nine holes, the second nine holes, or all 18 holes with par 72. Nah, that's right, it's the rodents. It was a caddy check reference. Nice touch. All right, let's go ahead and push start and play some golf challenge. And this one, I'm going to crank our volume down so we don't get bla blared off with too much. All right, so this is one of the very first golf games that gives you free reign to walk around. Look at me. Look, that's me running around with my club. And I can go anywhere. Can I even go in the tree? Yes, I can go all over the place. When you want to swing, you hold down the red button. You know, pull back on the stick. Very similar to Atari's version. And then that's it. Does that count as a stroke? No, it doesn't. It only counts whenever you hit the ball. So I can just keep swinging the, my club all the way around if I want, and nothing happens. Yeah, no, no, no stroke. All right, so we move our. 
Uh, that looks really wrong. I'm holding the club between my legs. Don't hit the golf ball. Uh, all right, so let's move over here. Oh, that did count. So you have to make sure you swing it the right direction. You tilt it back. And go. Way out of bounds. Oh, gosh. It only counted as second stroke, though. Okay, I'll take it. Get our club back here. <laughs> it is so bizarre playing this way. It's almost like they're giving us too much freedom to play the golf game, to go anywhere we want to. If you play this with multiple people, you just have fun running around a golf uh, course and really not playing. So you have to know, based on how far you pull back on the club like this, how far and powerful the swing's going to be. There is no... Yes, we're on the green. There is no different club. And as far as power goes, it just it's just determined by how far back you are and then moving the other direction. So um, with uh, the, the other golf games we played, this mechanic where you kind of rear back on the golf club, but then you push another button, it'll swing for you. That's not here. All, all this is is holding down and... Is that... Yeah, that's it. Yeah, there is no button to swing the club. It's just you, you, you are doing it manually to swing the club. So it's awkward and a little clumsy. Maybe you would have more fun being out there with the rodents and the, the rain on, on, the, on the tee. Oh, yes, the future. Mean 18, we will see that one, definitely. All right, let's try doing it like this. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it is very, very difficult to pin down the right the right place. Let's try a different one. <laughs> did they count that? Oh, they did. Okay, so let's try it again. Nope, nope. This way. What? I clearly went through the ball that time. What? Oh, you can only hit on one side of the club? Let's try it like this. Oh, wow, you have to be an insane pro or play this a lot to be able to angle this up because the player isn't setting yourself up for the, the, the correct shot. You have to be in the right spot. Look at this. And know how... Wow, that's tricky. Oh, wow, we did it. It took a long time. Man, that's that's rough. One of the best golf games we've played was by Data East in the arcade, and every time you hit the ball, they automatically set you up in the right spot and had the the the, the player ready to hit the hit the ball the correct way, so you didn't have to worry about angles. You just had to worry about the power of it. So while they're giving us the freedom to move around, it's really not the best. Yeah, very poor mechanics. I'm with you. Yes, that's true. I thought in televisions was what much better than this. This is similar to Atari 2600, but I actually got used to that one. This one, I don't think so. Let's see. Yeah, it only works one way, so you gotta make sure your club's the right angle. Here we go, let's try this. From all the way back here, going downtown. And it, I know how far it's gonna go based on where I start the swing. So, so for example, if I keep the club here, and I only go like that, the ball's not going to go very far. But if I do the exact same thing, let me rear back here. If I start way, way back here, and then swing all the way around, this should go all the way to the green. Oh, nope. If you aim it right. It hit the tree. Okay. So this has no effect of, at least what I can tell, no effect of where you the, the lie is. If you're on grass or if you're on sand, it doesn't look like it makes any difference. And you can only hit one way, right? Yeah, it doesn't work that way. Gotta go around here, buddy. Let's angle up there. Got it. Ready? And how far back is the swing you need to go? I don't know. Is that it? Not enough. Okay, so let's try it again. Go back here. And we're on the green. It feels like I worked really, really hard to do that. It felt the same way on the Atari, though. And uh, there was another one we played on the Interton VC4000 that felt that way. Let's go. It's going to be way too powerful, though. Watch. Oh, it's the wrong way. Of course it is. Let's go there. Oh, see? Almost got it. <laughs> and we're in. How you would get... Look at that. Is that 19? It took me 19 strokes. <laughs> to do hole two. This would be very painful to do all 18 holes. That's ridiculous. 
Yeah, I, I'm with you in the chat. We've seen a lot of golf games on home consoles that have played better. Home computer golf games, they haven't lived up to the challenge yet. And this is another proof of all, all the games you could play. So while it is rare to see a golf game, I'd say of all the computer games, this is uh, down here in the, the range that's closer to bad. Um, just because of how difficult it is to know how much power you're going to use and um, where the angle is of where the ball's going to go. So I'm going to say two stars of all the games you can see or play on a home computer for Golf Challenge. And it's by Sierra. I had high hopes and I wanted to play and enjoy a, a fun golf game, but man, it's, it's pretty frustrating. We're not going to see some uh, really good ones until around 1983. Get ready for those, especially for the home computer. They blow up in Japan. It's going to be awesome. All right, so that's where we got to put our video game playing on pause. Tune in next episode for the latest by Activision, some more games for your Commodore VIC-20, and an arcade game you've never heard of before. That's it for today, and like I always say, you can't beat us at our own game. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel and joining me on my quest to play every single video game in order of release. We'll be streaming live every weekday at 9 p.m. Central, so join us and let us know if we missed any games along the way. This video would not be possible without LaunchBox, RetroArch, and MAME. Tell all your friends there's some crazy guy named Chronologically Gaming trying to play every single video game. We have links down below that'll send you to places like our Discord and Patreon, and one that says all the video games we've ever played. If you go there, it's a list of everything, and you can click right to the game you want to see. Chronologically Gaming is the name to look for. We are Perpetually Retro, and we will catch you next time.